This is your News Now Sports. After a winless 2018 season, changes were made at Bath, with the headliner being at the head coaching position. Ryan Rydell is now the new man at the helm, and his mindset stepping into his new role is to change the culture at Bath. The Wildcats graduate only 11 seniors from an extremely young roster that saw 21 freshmen on the varsity team, and the trend continues in 2019 with just five seniors on this squad. But while Bath may still be young, they aren't without plenty of playing experience, which is what the Wildcats will hang their hats on this fall. Arcade Gilhuli has more as tonight's countdown to kickoff takes us to Bath. Countdown to kickoff is brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. For the Bath Wildcats, this year is about starting something new. And for first-year head coach Ryan Rindell, the team and its success is more than just a job. I was a part of the uh, the last team that made the playoffs in 03. Um, it's been a while ago. Um, we're trying to get back there, but uh, it's a long process. But um, you know, going you know going through that process as a player, um, you know, adds a little bit of pride to it. So that uh, we want to get these kids that same experience. Even making a playoff appearance in 2003, the Wildcats haven't won the WBL since 1999. And after going 0-10 last season, the Blue and Yellow have some improving to do, especially offensively, finishing last in the league in scoring offense, total offense, and rushing offense. Offensively, uh, our offensive line is, is kind of our focus point. You know, we're going to go as, as our offensive line takes us. We want to want to be able to run the football. Um, and, and still be able to pass protect and, and throw the ball around a little bit. But it starts all up front and we got to get our offensive line there and, and get a little stronger and, and a little bit of toughness there. Defensively, there is a bright spot returning eight starters to a side of the ball, which finished fourth in the league in total defense last season. On defense, we need a lot of energy and it seems like we brought a lot of energy for practice and stuff, and scrimmages. And with the returning Letterman's back, it's I think we're going to do good this year. We have a, a lot of guys that are back on that defensive side of the ball, um, and they, they play together very well. Um, they mesh well. We're a very aggressive type defense, and, and those guys that got minutes last year, um, you know, th those experiences are going to kind of help them, propel them into some successes this year. Looking at the big picture, the Wildcats know this year won't come without hardships, but they hope this season proves to be the start of something bigger and better. I know the seniors want to change the culture around here and the juniors want to too so if we change it this year then next year we'll be seniors and then we'll be able to continue the culture that these seniors left off. We're going to try to establish a new winning culture here at Bath. Uh, we were very successful in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s here so we're trying to uh, get back to our old ways and that was built on uh, toughness and you know hard work and, and discipline and so we're trying to use those principles to instill a new winning culture here at Bath. In Lima, Katie Gahuli, your News Now Sports. Thanks, Katie. Moving to the pitch, boys soccer action in Elida as the Bulldogs take on Bluffton in the Fall Classic Championship game. Pick it up, second half, a foul in the box sends Aiden Bartels to the spot. He makes no mistake as the Bulldogs lead is 3-1. to one. Under 12 minutes to go now, Bluffton not out of it yet. Simon Durston flicks it past a pair of defenders before depositing it into the bottom corner. The Pirates cut the lead in half, but Elida hangs on. As here, Drake Little in behind the D. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He makes no mistake. Elida wins the Fall Classic Championship. They beat Bluffton 4-2. More boys soccer action at Spartan Stadium. LCC hosts Lincoln View today. Late first half, a foul in the box gives the Lancers a penalty kick. Clayton Leith finds the sweet spot for the only goal of the half. That's in part due to saves like this from Ollie Bruno, but the T-Birds can't get anything going offensively. Lincoln View wins it 4-0. Girls turn now in Bluffton as the Pirates are home for a date with Bath. Second half, Bath up 5-2. They're looking for more, but Bluffton keeper Julie Mahaffey makes a big save there to keep her team within striking distance. Later in the half, Ainsley Miller breaks free in the box to punch this one past the keeper. That puts the Wildcats up four. Just over a minute later, Chandler Clark making a run down the near side before curling one past the keeper at the near post. Bath uses an offensive explosion to pick up a road win. Wildcats roll 7-2. We head indoors. Girls volleyball at Columbus Grove as the Bulldogs match up with New Bremen. First half, first set just underway and New Bremen gets on the board first. Taylor Paul goes right at the wall for the set's first point. Moments later, Claire Pope sets 
the backcourt hitter, Josie Reinhardt, who makes no mistake. It's 5-1 Cardinals early. Grove trying to hang around as it's back set to Megan Blankemeyer, who kills it cross court. That pulls the Bulldogs within five. They look for more here, but it's rejected at the net by Macy put off point New Bremen. Moments later, the Bulldogs show off some defense of their own as Cassie Heilman leads the way at the net to foil the kill attempt. But the road team too much today as Ellie Ruckerman spikes it home here. New Bremen wins it 3-1. to one. To Delphus we go as the Blue Jay Invitational takes place at Stadium Park this morning. Beginning in the girls event, this is Columbus Grove's Alyssa Ellibrock claiming the top spot. She crosses the finish line first in 19 minutes, 36 seconds, leading the Bulldogs to a team title as well. In the boys event, Anna's Hayden Schmidt is your winner with a first place time of 17 minutes, 4 seconds. The Rockets finish second as a team though, two points behind the Bulldogs as Columbus Grove sweeps the boys and girls team titles. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we return, we hit the diamond, the Indians, Reds, and Tigers all in action tonight. Full MLB highlights coming up right after this. The Cleveland Indians are looking to get back on a roll after snapping their three-game losing skid last night. The Tribe home once again this evening for game two of three against the basement dwellers of the AL Central and the Kansas City Royals. Bottom one, not what you want to see if you're an Indians fan. Jose Ramirez with a swing and miss, but something not right. Trainers would come out, he would leave the game with a right wrist injury. Bottom three now, still no score. Mike Freeman shatters his bat with a slow roll around the infield, but there's no play to be made as Oscar Mercado scores to put the Tribe on top and in the third they add to it is with two on and two out. Fran Mil Reyes has lift off a three run shot down the line and left opens it up for the Indians and they wouldn't look back. Cleveland wins it four to two in Pittsburgh. The Reds try to bounce back from last night's walk off loss game two or three against the Pirates. Bottom six Reds already down three make that seven as Colin Moran demolishes a grand slam to right. His 12th of the season makes it sevens at Pittsburgh and they weren't done. Bottom seven two on two out and John Josh Bell takes Kevin Gosman the other way. That's a three run bomb. The Pirates offense explodes tonight as they dismantle the Reds 14 nothing. We finish in Minnesota as the Tigers look for back to back victories against the AL Central leading Twins. Top three Tigers down one, but not anymore as Dewell Lugo blasts a solo shot to left. Just his second homer of the season ties the game at one. Bottom five Tigers clinging to a one run lead, but it disappears quickly. Miguel Sano with a three run jack to left. That would propel the Twins to an 8-5 win, Katie. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. We'll wrap things up after the break.